Hello, friends, and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz from Sassy's LLC, and I am so excited about this funny, punny light-up card. We have a little battery hatch in the back so we can replace it if it ever runs out. And it says, oh, holy night. And then we have some donuts and some donut holes. <laughs> So we're going to use the tiny donut dippers from Trinity Stamps for our two donuts and the donut holes. For our festive accessories, this is the Spellbinders October Large Die of the Month. And that's where I got the Santa hat uh, and I got the earmuffs for our other donut. Then we have a die set I designed for Trinity Stamps called Emergency Card Essentials Number 1. And that's where I got the faces and my mats and layers for a bunch of these pieces. I'll kind of show you as we go along. But then there's also Emergency Card Essentials Number 2 where I got one of the layers, the stars, but also the sentiments. There's a free download with sentiments that comes with that die set. To make our shaker, I'm using a 2-inch shaker dome from Sizzix that fits perfectly in these halo lights. This pack came with two halo lights and four one lights. The halo lights create a circle or halo of lights. So here's that emergency card essentials number one die set. And I used the scallop circle and then I cut the two inch circle out of it. And that's really where we're gonna put our shaker and our lights. And so I have one that I've cut out just kind of for placement to figure out where I want my lightest ink and then we'll get a little bit darker from there. So I used a little sponge sugar in the middle. After that, I have some Uncharted Mariner, maybe my favorite ink, and then Chip Sapphire just to finish it all out. I'm starting with a navy panel, and so I don't have to do a whole ton of ink blending. I really like that kind of dreamy winter sky look. Plus, I started with a navy panel, which is my favorite way to ink blend. Start with a colored cardstock, and then there's just a little bit less time and energy spent on making sure I have full coverage everywhere. I'm using some metallic watercolors. I'm just using the white one on here and splattering that on for some of our sort of stars in the night sky. And then I will set that aside to dry. So here are my donuts. I have cut two donuts with frosting, and then I'm gonna use two sets of faces. I have stolen, this is that large die of the month, the earmuffs that go with the penguin and the hat that goes with Santa. I love that that die set has two Santa hats, one where the poofy ball goes off to the left and one where it goes to the right. Um, <laughs> they're meant to make some Santa slippers, right? So you would have a pair of them on your card and it just cracks me up. I am adding my little earmuffs on my donut and it's like they were meant to be there. You guys, I love stretching my dies and finding ways to like get new uses out of them. So when I designed the emergency card essentials die set, I was like, do we have room for faces? Cause I wanna put faces on some donuts. I've been imagining this card for three months. And so the die set just released, I'm getting to share it with you now. So I was torn when I was putting the faces on here should I make the hole in the donut be their mouth? Like maybe they're singing oh, Holy Night. Um, but for her, I really wanted that cute smiling face. I stuck all of it up kind of top. But on this second one, I'm imagining this sort of like a long faced donut who has this sort of goofy dopey look. And so <laughs> we're gonna do it a little bit differently for him. You, I played with so many arrangements for these donuts. I could make a dozen of them. I added some glitter cardstock for the white pieces on my hat, and then the donut has white shimmer cardstock, so it catches the light really, really beautifully. And there's his mouth all the way down at the bottom of the donut. Ah, I was sure I wanted the eyes right next to each other until I spread them apart so I could add glue, and I liked that one too. You'll have to let me know what you prefer. So here are my two donuts and I'm gonna kind of set those aside and I'll show you just a couple of the donut holes. I made a whole bunch of these, um, mostly from scraps. Every time I cut out a donut, it creates a donut hole. And actually I'm using the donut that, that is created by cutting out the frosting. There's two different sizes of donut holes and there is frosting that can top both sizes. There's also like a little squiggly frosting bit that I've added to several of them. I'm gonna take my panel and then the largest rectangle die from Emergency Card Essentials number two, and I'm gonna die cut that. I'm also going to put the two inch circle die from set number one in the middle because that's where our shaker dome is gonna be. 
You could certainly use a trimmer for those layers, but the dies leave that modern embossed edge that I think is just really kind of fancy, makes it extra special. I'm nesting together the scallop circle and two inch circle uh, because that will go around the outside of our circle shaker. And then we need to work on our sentiment. So emergency card essentials one and two both come with printables that are exclusive to those die sets. So this is the one that comes with number two. And there's a die from set one that will cut out that rectangle. Um, but, <laughs> but we're gonna cut it in the shape of a circle. The printable has circle sentiments. It just doesn't have that one in a circle sentiment, which is my fault, I guess I made it, but I wasn't anticipating making the card in this way yet. So I printed mine with a laser printer and I'm gonna use this pink and main cheer foil. It's a 25 foot roll. And I have cut a piece that will cover just the Oh Holy Night. I have some printing from the sentiment below it, but I don't wanna foil that. It'll be harder to cover up. Then I'm gonna run this through my mini mink on setting number four. I am using just a folded A2 card with heavyweight cardstock as my carrier to run that through. It melts the plastic that is the toner and then as it cools, that foil sticks to the toner. So I get this beautiful, shiny, oh holy night. This came out perfectly. I was so, so pleased. Then I started playing around with ways to cover up the black text <laughs> that's on the bottom. I tried oxide inks first and that didn't really do it. So I'm bringing in some Brilliance Silver. It is a pigment ink from Sukaneko. And as I sort of dab that on with my sponge dauber, it covers up most of it. I do need to heat set it, but that's not a problem. This worked really, really well. I am wiping off the ink from on top of the Oh Holy Night. And then I'm bringing in chipped sapphire in the oxide ink just to push back on some of the silver ink. And actually, it's still able to cover up the text on the bottom because the silver ink was heat set on there already. I'll clean off the excess ink with my towel and then heat set it one more time. You could probably skip this step. I don't think you see a whole lot of this silver card stock by the time the card is done. But this circle is one and seven eighths of an inch. I used my clean cut layer circle set B from Trinity to do that. And it's just going to hide even more of that text in case anybody could see it. And once the card's done, I was like, oh, I didn't need to do that. But, but it's done. I did that. There is an adhesive layer already on the Sizzix shaker. So I peeled back the release paper and then I'm putting in a bunch of Oh My Stars confetti from Trinity. I am going to make a mistake here that I'm not going to realize until I'm almost done. The adhesive layer on this dome is very, very sticky and my stars kind of get stuck around the edges, um, which isn't a problem, but I would have put more stars in there if I had known. So right away, it's fine, but then later on, um, you're going to see they don't move as much as I might have wanted. So here's my halo light and I'm just gonna stick a battery in it and push the button. It's got five lights and the opening is perfect for a two inch circle um, and for that shaker dome. So I'm gonna end up layering everything kind of on top of that. I did my ink blending on 65 pound cardstock. I wanted it to match my sentiment cardstock and that's all my printer can handle. So I need at least one more layer to make sure that the card is nice and sturdy because this piece is gonna get popped up on foam tape. So I have temporarily adhered that onto the silver panel and I'm taking my two inch die and just sort of popping it right into place. It fits like a puzzle piece. I'll tape it down and then I will run that through my die cutting machine. I probably could have glued that layer on before running it through, but if anything went wrong, <laughs> like if the layers shifted, I wanted to make sure I could still save my blue panel. On another day, I might have been braver and just glued it down and gone for it. I'm gonna use a little wet glue to try to get that arranged so that the circle is perfectly centered and so is the panel. And then this little piece here that we've been using since the beginning, he is super helpful as well. He can tidy up any edges uh, that might not be quite right. He's a little more flexible than the full panels. To put my light in here, I am actually gonna install it upside down. And so I have a sticker on the back where the button is to help me out. And I want that button to end up 
right where the star is going to be at the top of my stack of donut holes. Right now, the donuts are just stacked there. They are not glued together because I wanted to make sure that the button was gonna be in the right place. I often don't stamp push on the front of my card. Instead, I'll write a note on the inside that says, press on the star on the donut hole tree. <laughs> Oh my gosh, sentences I never thought I'd say. But that means I have to be careful as I put that tree together to make sure that it's gonna end up in a place where the button can reach, okay? So I am starting at the top and just kind of layering everything one on top of the other. This is maybe the hardest possible way <laughs> to go about this. If I had waited to cut the hole in my blue panel until I had the tree assembled, then I would have more wiggle room to make sure that the button's in the right spot. So next time I make one of these cards, and you guys, I'm probably gonna make a couple of these, I will do it that way. I'll just wait to die cut that circle. So I'm lining up that bottom layer. There's three donuts in the bottom, three in the second, and then we go two and then one. I liked this better than just three, two, one, which felt kind of squat. I prefer to have all of my donuts glued together as a single piece instead of gluing them directly on the card. But again, part of that's because I have to be really picky about where the button goes. Off camera, I poked a hole through that panel where I had my gold dot where the button is gonna go. And I just stuck my pencil through that to mark onto the card base where I need that button. Then I'm putting removable adhesive behind the Oh Holy Night. And I'm gonna just arrange it inside that panel and then I'll lay it on top of the card base. I want to make a trap door inside the card where you can replace the battery later if you want. And so if you don't care about that part of it, you can skip these couple of steps. So I'm going to install this upside down. It makes it easier to take the battery out. And then I'm going to put it over top of that shaker dome and I am tracing around that battery section. Okay. And I actually straightened out a couple of the edges just so it would be easier to cut. In theory, you could cut like a trap door in the middle. And I've done that in some other videos, but this seemed easier for this card. I'm just using my scissors and cutting right along where those pencil lines are. And then I'm gonna draw one more line for myself. This one, I'm gonna turn into a score line. I have a really thick ruler here and then a scoring tool, but if you have like a dead pen, right? Bic pens when they run out are perfect for this. And I'm just gonna run it along the ruler and it will help me make sure I get a nice fold there. Then I double checked it with my light and everything's gonna work just fine for my trap door. Now I can start adding my Oh Holy Night <laughs> shaker dome onto the card base. If you don't care about the trap door, you could have skipped all of that and gone straight to this step. I really like wet glue for this because it lets me wiggle and make sure that my card panels are straight on my card base and that my sentiment is straight and not kind of crooked. And that works really, really well. Then I'm gonna open that trap door and I'm gonna actually bring in my scissors and trim away part of the excess card stock that's hanging out from around the shaker dome just to make sure I'm not gonna struggle later or somebody else isn't gonna struggle later to push that battery out. I'm using the world's best foam tape from Pear Blossom Press. This stuff is awesome. It is repositionable for 30 minutes and you better believe I reposition a lot of things when I'm trying something new. And this was something new for me. I had never used one of these shaker domes before. So it's everywhere except for on the trap door and we'll deal with that later. Then I have a bunch of double-sided adhesive tape on the back of my one light. I want to adhere this to my blue panel. I have not removed the release paper from my foam tape yet. We'll do that in a minute. I just wanna make sure that this guy is lined up where he needs to be on this panel. So I'm starting by lining up the bottom left-hand corner of the card, and then I'm really focusing on where the fold of my card is before I lay this down to pick up the halo light. That way I know everything's gonna fit. You can see it there on the back of that blue panel. Then I'm going to put this whole thing into my scoreboard to try to make sure they get lined up correctly. It's helpful. There's less panic for me because that tape is repositionable. But still, because of the big bubble, I mean, that guy sticks up quite a bit. I was a little nervous about this one. So that's one of the ways I try to make sure that everything is straight, especially 
right along the fold of the card where like you can't cut the fold or it's not a card anymore. I can now do the final decorating of my card. I'm adding on my big donut with her earmuffs. <laughs> I just love her. And then my donut tree with a star on top. For sentiment on the inside, I'm using the same printable that comes with emergency kit number two. I have just used the tick marks on there to cut out the stars are brightly shining. There is a scallop rectangle mat in set number one that I'm adding to the inside and then I'll use removable adhesive for this piece in case I wanna add something else. Emergency cards are called that because you can swap out these interchangeable sentiments. It's part of a series of free printables over on my channel. I'll link to the playlist for you in case you're interested in more of those. And then I can add our dopey donut dude. He needs a name. If you have ideas for names, I wanna know about it. And then this large star uh, to go right with this sentiment. I'm gonna use my removable adhesive to keep my trap door shut. So I put a little bit where it's gonna hit the metal of the battery pack. And then here I'm using the same Pear Blossom Press foam tape. I just added it to some cardstock, and then I'll cut a piece that will fit in here in the empty space but isn't gonna keep me from removing the battery. So I removed the release paper and I can stick that right down in there. The top then just has cardstock on it and I don't have to worry about it getting stuck forever. Then a little removable adhesive, I'll close the trap door and it's good to go. So that finishes up our funny holiday card. You guys, I these halo lights, are so bright it's such a big wow i hadn't used them before i think they are just fantastic i'll have links to everything in the description box below the video if you're new here be sure to hit the subscribe button and come back for more inspiration thank you so much for joining me and i will see you next time